coming up this week on Stage to the Cage. It's raining. I've got a Hawaiian shirt on. This show has sold out everywhere. Like, this show's been going on for a full solid year now, and it's still got until the end of November to go. Throw in just a little casual MMA fight. Ah, yes. What's your name? Nathaniel. Dickhead. Oh, fuck, I want to keep this up. I don't know. I don't want to get all zen with you at the start of this episode, but life is about balance. Achieving that balance between work, life, love, family is hard at the best of times. Jake and Paul are definitely struggling with that balance, especially now as they've added preparing for a fight into that mix. This is what makes them different. This is what has seen them become successful in their professional lives. These guys are ordinary guys who do extraordinary things. But what I want everyone to remember before this episode is that they're just everyday people. You know, everyday people who can just happen to sell out Liverpool's biggest arena two nights in a row. Been a bit giddy about this one. It's a big, big fucker, this one. This, this is the biggest one of the tour. So I'm here the next two nights, hometown gig as well, so... Yeah, I, mean, I took a few fucking bumps this week as well, so got a little cut on the cheek. Sparring on Tuesday night, it's just did a four out. So did, did a few grappling sessions and then when I did some sparring, first first punch just fucking caught me sweet, just lovely uppercut from our Tommy, and bang, and I just I, I, so I grabbed him, but I just saw blood everywhere, and I was like fuck, <laughs> and I was like oh god, and I tried to just not let my head fall off and can't, you know, you try, you think it's done now, just fucking don't think about it, but in my head it was about this big, and then I was like shit. Um, but it wasn't too bad, it wasn't too bad. So I took a few more knocks, fucking a bit of Velcro across the face. I'm sore today, like, my body's in bits. But, um, so I thought, I, I don't want to go, I was supposed to go and grapple this morning, but I was a bit scared of that just opening up and me end up in A&E all day, getting stitches when I'm supposed to be here. And it's just, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the difficult thing, really. It's like, you got to really, I, I want to be training all the time, but I've really, sometimes I've just got to weigh up with the risk against, like, I can't miss this, so yeah. He was getting ready at home and he was like, I feel nervous. Uh, and I was like, what? I've never heard him say that he feels nervous, ever, in four years, never. And he's done this gig before, obviously, he's done this venue before. Um, so I was like, I could, but then I could feel it. So I could feel his nerves. Cause like whatever Paul feels, I can feel. Um, so I was like getting ready and I was thinking, why am I feeling nervous? Cause I knew who he was. But um, I just gave him a little pep talk in the, in the car and just said, you're motherfucking Paul Smith. Do you know what I mean? You're gonna smash the shit out of this because these are, these are his people, it's his city. So like, if he's gonna fucking smash it anywhere, well, he smashes it everywhere, but you know, it's got nothing to worry about. This show has sold out everywhere. Like, this show's been going on for a full solid year now and it's still got until the end of November to go. And, a, and he's got a fight as well. Just, just throw in just a little casual MMA fight. Silly sick, silly sick. It'll be nice to see like his people and the audience from the arena like when he comes out to fight as well because um it's gonna be chaos. And I'm gonna be a fucking nightmare, you know that, don't you? I am gonna be the loudest bastard on the side of that ring. I'm gonna be crazy. Jake, 
he's going to be, um, I don't know, he's going to be outnumbered, I think. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. It's off. But how would you trash talk to someone that you don't know? I don't get it. Me and Paul could be going, oh, you fucking shit, I would have knocked you out, but I don't know him. And like I've said before, I quite like him. So I ain't got any reason to trash talk. And I just think when I watch, like, all the trash talking on these, like, boxing things or misfits and stuff, I just think, you're making it like the WWE. If you actually have a vendetta against someone and you hate each other, then fair enough, but if you don't know each other, I can't sit here and be like, I'm gonna fucking kill the dickhead. Because I don't know him, and like, I also don't feel like that. Like, I just wanna, I just wanna, I just wanna win. Paul might be on the cameras trash talking the shit out of me, I don't even know, but I have been doing it. I'm not gonna lie, there's been a few times where I'm like, I can't be asked to do this. I'm too tired, or I ain't got time. But then you think, you've always got an hour to do a little bit of something. Is it fucking rainy? Fucking sir. It was sunny when I opened the blind. I've got a fucking vest on. I've got a Hawaiian shirt on. Carpool karaoke with Jake Quickenham. Lean on me! Woo! When you're in the store! Oh, what I, say. <laughs> I am rehearsing. I go on tour with the Full Monty. So obviously everyone knows the film, the Full Monty, set in Sheffield about five geezers who need to earn a bit of money. So they decide to, to do a strip. A strip. We're just going in the tunnel again. We'll be out in a sec. One second, guys. Don't don't leave the YouTube vid. <laughs> Here we go. We're back. Um, so yeah, it's about five guys who want to earn a bit of money and I think it's quite relevant even in today like it's about kind of like a brotherhood and sticking together doing things with your mates so I take it on tour we start in September we're going around the UK for until April end of April so it's a long tour um, and I'm in rehearsals at the minute so we are now 11 minutes away from getting into rehearsals. It takes an hour and a half every day to drive in, hour and a half to get home. So yeah, it's most of my days at the minute is rehearsing for this. The training's been mint and I've loved the training and the fact that it's kind of dropped off a little bit now I'm in rehearsals, is, it's annoying me a little bit because I was absolutely loving just training every single day. Do you know what I want to know about Octagon? is when they say, when you've got Brian going, one of UK's biggest reality stars, and everyone thinks it's got to be Joey Essex or something, <laughs> and then I pop up, and they use the worst photo of me on the X Factor, no beard, ice gem on my head, my quiff's about seven metres tall, I look like a little weasel, and everyone's like, in the comments, Biggest reality is that I don't even know who this guy is. They stitched me right up. They should have just said, just some random geezer who wants to fight because they've stitched me up. So, Bri, I know you're a commentator on Octagon, but after this fight, I'm calling you out. I'm fighting you for using the worst frigging picture ever of me on the X Factor. I had a Top Man t-shirt on. How dare you? You're gonna walk in with the itty bitty wasting around thing in your face. Right, so that is me. I'll see you in eight hours after rehearsal's finished. Later. <laughs> Look at that. Stars. I've already started now, Charlotte. We're on this roller coaster, mate, together. I want to learn sign language by the end of this shit. <laughs> Cliff Gore tomorrow, the loft border. Oh, we're doing loft border. Oh, yeah, is that what you're doing? Yeah, we have a nice banter. Well, inside. <laughs> I 
I'll just go back to the death girl, shall I? Look, we got one. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I've got pubes early. I had pubes when I was free. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What's your name? Nathaniel. Dickhead. <laughs> There's been some ups and downs, obviously. Like, ups in being, like, obviously seeing his hard work pay off. Um... You know, there's been a few challenging bits where, because he was really solidly disciplined from January um, this year, going through to like so for so many months, like where he didn't have one drop of drink, he didn't have nothing. It was just so. And you know what? I, I admired that kind of dedication. I was like, hey, you're like a fucking robot. You know, he was a robot. Um, and then he, he did lose a lot of weight, and he lost. And so I think he tried to not be as rigid. And um, when he did that, he's, he started having a drink here and there and, and whatever. So I think he fell off that, like, really rigid regime. Um, but now... But I think, to be honest, I think that was more realistic because for him to go from J January to November being that rigid, I think he just would have been absolutely depressed, maybe. I don't know. I don't know how anyone can be that rigid. I'm quite a balanced person. And Paul's not, he's just one that way or the other. So, um, but when the time is right, he will throw himself back in, when, when it needs to be, he will throw himself back into that to cut the weight and stuff like that. He'll, he'll, um, he'll do it like I don't doubt him for a second. <laughs> Ooh, nice that. Nice that, really. Proper sound, huh? Yeah, it was a, I felt a lot more comfortable than I did in Belfast. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that bit. Yeah. Very. I'm just saying. My brain was fucking going a million miles a minute. I kept getting in my own head going, my brain was going, don't fucking forget to say that in a minute. And I'm like, why the fuck are you bringing that up now? I've been saying it to me. So, yeah. It was fucking great. The whole thing was great. Felt like I had control of it all the way through. I was getting really to get into grip. I was playing with the pauses, trying to get to grip with the. Um, I, was saying, I was playing with the pauses, trying to get to grip with the pauses, because, like, it's, it's like there was points where I don't know if you could hear it, but like, about like, the back laughs about a second after yeah, the front. The delay in it. And then I hear that about a second after they've laughed. Yeah. So it's too, which doesn't sound like how long, but it's fucking long. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So then it seems to me like they're laughing at something else. Yeah. So now they don't want to step on their laugh. Yeah. It's fucking. It's hard to gauge because you don't know when they're hearing you. Yeah. In real time, it's yeah. fucking mad. It's such a mad experience. Because it's such a big room as well, isn't it? Obviously, yeah. the sound in a room like that. And so, but the mad, like the weird thing is, it's so like, like to, I, every time I looked, like you could really see those like ten people on the front. Yeah. To the point where I, I was just like I was making eye contact with them loads, and they were just like. <laughs> it was just such a small gig as well. Yeah, yeah. Because so, everyone else is just like, just yeah. so, it's like a background, you know what I mean? Like you, had, you had a bit of a kick off in the top right, didn't you? Uh, top left to me, top, yeah. yeah. Top, top left, left to me. You. Yeah, and I felt I wasn't gonna, because there was a couple of people shouting stuff out, but I just went over it. But I, that was persistence, and I felt the room just dragged yeah. that way. And I thought, all right, I'm gonna stop here. So, but it was at a, it was at a point where I could stop. It was two women fighting. Was it? Yeah, yeah. It was two women fighting, one security guy had to drag one woman off the other and the other woman was, get her the fuck out now. I was like, wow, this is heavy. Wow. But they were on it. Though. That was sad. Yeah, the, the staff seemed great, the staff. Yeah, everything was good. Ah, oh, right, I need a pint. I feel, yeah. Yeah. I feel like that's going to hit me in about two days and I'm just going to be like fucking in, in my bed like that. <laughs> <laughs> <It's just laughs> we got it again tomorrow though. I know. Right, so that's rehearsals done. It's uh, don't know why I'm looking at my whoop because I haven't even got time on. Um, six o'clock, back home in the gym. I hate traffic. In traffic, the worst thing. So full day at rehearsal. I'm absolutely. I'm not even gonna lie. I am cream crackered. It's now going to take probably an hour and 20 to get home. So that will take us to five past seven. And then 
I want to go straight in the garage and do a workout probably for an hour. Which, if I'm totally honest with you, is the last thing on this earth that I want to do right now. I want to go home, get in my freaking Tesco dressing gown, have a cup of tea, eat about 12 crumpets with some Marmite on, and then have a bath, play with my son, give my stepson the ch chocolate I bought him, kiss my wife on the face, and then go to bed. But because I've agreed to fight another human, I've got to go friggin' punch the punch bag in the garage. <sighs> you know when realisation kicks in? It's just done it in this traffic jam. The whoop is starting. I'm doing a circuit. I'm getting it done in the dungeon. Come on in if you want, at your own peril. One down. Two to go. Now can you see why it's called a dungeon? I just want nobody. I don't want to give anyone anyone the opportunity to say it didn't work out. Even if I lose, I want people to know that I put it in at least. I took it serious. How the fuck I'm gonna keep this up? I don't know. Next time on Stage to the Cage. I've got a show tonight, and then I've got a show every day for eight months. Got my own dressing room. Fucking hell! The fuck is this? This is the worst bed. Ugh. Come on, pull, pull. Ah. 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 So I tried not to watch any of it because I go back and forth. I'll catch something of his on, like, or someone will send me a video of his, and I'm like, oh, fucking man, he's massive, than he's fucking younger than me, and he's fitter than me, and he's faster than me, and it gets in your head. About an hour ago, I was giving him a hug, and I've really hurt your rib, haven't I? Yeah. You're, you're a machine, you're a mountain, you're an animal. Whoever's fighting against you, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess, officially, this is fight camp now, eight weeks out, maybe. We're nearly there. We're nearly there.